Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing this drawing of Eastern Bluebird and I'm going to be using colored pencils. Let me show you the drawing process. I'm going to be working with Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils and maybe a little bit with some Kohinoor pencils. And the paper I'm going to be working on is a Fabriano toned paper called clay. It's like a very light warm gray. Later I'm going to prime the paper with clear gesso. But first I'm going to do most of the drawing. The reference will be in the description. It's a very nice looking bird. And I will change the background a little bit. Now as for the colors, you can see that it's mostly going to be some bluish and orangey tones. The eye or most of the details here are black, but even though later I will be able to put in some lighter details, I will reserve the space for some of the lighter tones. Because in this first stage, while I'm working on this regular paper, I can't really work from dark to light. So I have to work in the usual way by putting in the darker areas first and reserving the, reserving the areas of lighter value where needed or where I can plan ahead and putting those uh, lighter areas using a white colored pencil or, or light grays or whatever. After that I'm going to start working on the top of the head and the and these uh, bluish feathers. Now later when I apply the clear gesso on top of my drawing I'm going to get a sanded surface that's going to be able to take more layers and after that I'll be able to put in more details, put some lighter details on top of the darker areas. I'll be able to do all kinds of stuff. So at the top of the head here I added a touch of white and then made a transition to, uh, towards some lighter blues. Now in the reference I couldn't really tell what the color of the feathers was uh, there were a couple of different blues I started first with a little bit of sky blue and then some light uh, thalo blue to make a transition towards that uh, white at the top and, and I made that lighter because obviously the light source is coming from above so that part of the head the top of the head is going to be lighter and the feathers there are going to be lighter, not completely white, but you know, I made a sort of a transition making them lighter and lighter. And then I made them darker and darker further down and away from the light source using the regular thalo blue and even some darker blues like, uh, I don't know, a couple of darker blues, let's say, and even a touch of black colored pencil here and there because I also need to make indications of not just the general shape of the head because this area above the eye, the, the eyebrow area, it's a little bit darker because it's facing down so I'm not just trying to shade or show the shape of the, the general shape of the head but I also need to indicate uh, the texture or the the appearance of those uh, short small feathers by adding these darker lines in between the lighter ones so that it looks like a bunch of small feathers so I'm trying to create a texture that looks like uh, like this bird's feathers and much like when you're drawing fur on animals uh, on furry animals um, you have to pay attention to the length and the direction of the feathers because these tiny feathers they're almost like tiny hairs and uh, you have to pay attention to their length and the angle or the direction in which they 
grow so you have to pull your strokes in a similar direction and you have to make sure that the, the length of your strokes the, the length of your pencil strokes matches the length of those feathers and of course like I said in addition to that I'm also trying to match that with um, with the appropriate colors even though it, you won't be able to get the exact same colors obviously now as you can see I've moved on to the beak and it's mostly black with a few shiny reflective areas and a few of those yellowish details on it but I'm gonna put the darker details first and in my reference uh, the position of the beak is a little bit different so I closed it and I changed it a little bit I hope I, I hope I got the shape right there are some bluish tones on that reflect, uh, reflection on the beak so I put those in as well but it's mostly a very light color and of course there are some yellowish details here now I'm going to start with a regular yellow and then add a touch of orange here and there because I see some orangey tones especially around the nostril and the opening of the mouth and things like that and a few lighter yellow details now once I have that in place and once I've uh, done most of the eye and uh, th those smaller details I'm going to move on to the to this part of the scene the the bird is sitting on some kind of a branch or a twig and I'm going to simplify the appearance of that branch uh, first I'm going to draw above the upper edge using a dark green pencil because I want to create a contrast between the light side of that branch and uh, the background. The background is going to be a little bit darker in some places and a little bit lighter in others. The reason why I like it that way and the reason why I want to achieve that is because that will help me further create, further emphasize the contrast between the uh, the main subject and the background. So in some places where the, 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 the main subject's body is lighter, like the top of the head, I'm going to put some um, darker greens maybe to enhance that contrast, to emphasize that contrast and to make the main subject stand out even more. And in other places where maybe there, there is a shadow area like the beak or the left uh, or the right side of the body or, and the area under the beak where there is a little bit of shadow, I'm going to make the background there a little bit lighter. So for the most part I layered the pencil relatively patiently and after that I did a bit of blending with a Q-tip. Another thing that you can do to blend is uh, to use a brush. But you have to remember that when you're working in dry media and only in dry media without using any solvents, uh, the colored pencils will be a little bit difficult to blend. You can also try to layer lighter pencils on top of the darker ones like I'm using now. I'm actually using a lighter green called Earth Green which will help with the blending process a little bit and it'll help to soften some of that texture. But I have to tell you I'm not particularly worried about the texture because there are a few ways of softening it or dealing with it a little bit later. That doesn't mean that you can just rush through this part of the process and create an ugly texture. It's better to work patiently covering a small area at a time. But of course uh, there are ways to soften it. Using harder bristle brushes is one of those ways because uh, that helps to smooth it out and to distribute the um, the pigment a bit more evenly and like I said another way is to use in the um, the lighter pencils uh, there are other tricks you can use for example you can use pastels for the background you can use a pastel pencil of a similar color and sort of blend that with colored pencils or just 
do most of it with uh, pastel that will create a soft out of focus background that will work but another thing that I plan to do obviously as I've already mentioned is to apply the clear gesso and that's going to make the blending and layering easier so any things that I don't really like on my drawing I can work on top of that once I have the clear gesso in place as you can see I'm starting to work on these orangey feathers and the orange in this bird's feathers has a bit of a reddish component so I'm using a cadmium red and that's what I'm going to be using for the most part I want to make a sort of a transition here between the bluish feathers and the orangey feathers and then uh, I'm going to make the feathers here under the beak and to the right a little bit darker so my light side from what I can tell from the reference is uh, obviously the, uh, the top part, the, the top of the head and the left side is a little bit lighter so that's the light side, the shadow side is to the right so the light source is coming more from the, light, uh, from the left and from above I'm using some uh, slightly darker colors here under the beak like um, some Caput Mortem, some um, Burnt Umber and um, and even black, even a black colored pencil for some of those uh, darkest bits and then I'm just going to move on uh, working on these uh, short feathers on the chest and the belly area for the most part they are so short and thin that they look like fine hairs they almost look like short fur and that's how I'm gonna draw them I actually prefer drawing birds which, uh, with such uh, small fine feathers because it's just easier that way when you have to draw these large layered feathers like uh, on eagles and owls and things like that that can get very complex and you can get uh, really lost in all the layers of those large feathers this I think is a lot simpler to draw plus I think the colors are also um, prettier, much prettier so it's a lot of fun drawing these smaller birds they're, they're very interesting colorful subjects to draw but at the same time I think they're not too challenging and I think that my technique of doing 98% of the drawing process first on regular paper and then applying the primer, the clear gesso really helps me add some extra details which you will see at the end of the drawing process if you stick around you, uh, to, till the end of the, of the video you will see that part of the drawing process where I actually add those final touches on top of the clear gesso and I'm doing a little bit more of the background mixing in or layering in some darker greens and some lighter greens blending whichever way I can but like I said I'm not overly concerned about that because there are ways of making it smoother now as for these feathers on the chest and the belly area um, even though I'm gonna put um, a lot of this cadmium orange there and cover most of the background color of the paper I'm still working in these short strokes short marks to imitate the texture of the feathers and the appearance of those feathers because even though I will blend a little bit and layer on top of that some of the texture and some of those lines will still remain so it's a good idea to get the direction of those feathers and the length of those feathers to look right so that you know it, the details on the uh, of the birds feathers would look uh, the, the way they're supposed to so that the bird would look realistic as you can see I'm doing a little bit of blending and that will soften some of the texture and some of the details but that's fine because I can bring them back and like I said some of those lines will still remain now what I'm doing here is I'm going back in and putting in some darker touches. Uh, what I want to do with this is uh, I want to indicate that there are some shadow areas in between those small feathers, um, some deeper 
areas uh, where there is less light coming through. So I'm trying to make the that small coat of feathers a little more layered and I'm trying to give it a bit more depth. I may, I'm trying to make it look more three-dimensional because whenever you have some kind of a range of value from the lighter values to the darker values you have an opportunity to show the shape and uh, the dimension of something and uh, the depth of something even of such things such as um, fur or feathers so what, that's what I'm doing here the texture I'm creating is making the feathers appear more three-dimensional even though they're just a bunch of lines at this point. And of course I'm trying to remember that I need to put more of those darker marks on the right side, especially on the part of the neck under the beak because that part of the bird is in the shadow, that's the shadow side. And I'm also trying to group those feathers a little bit into clumps of feathers so that they don't just look like a bunch of parallel lines but they're sort of grouped in a more natural way following the shape and the anatomy of the bird's body. And if some of these uh, darker marks maybe stand out a little bit too much that's okay, I can always work on top of them once I have the clear gesso in place. So I will be doing some more layering and I will be trying to increase the range of value and make this look as three-dimensional as possible. Here and there on this top part of the chest area I will put some lighter marks with a white pencil where I can. I'm not trying to push it uh, because I'm very limited as to how much I can work from dark to light just yet. So I can put in a few of those lighter marks but later I will refine it a little bit more. Now I'm going to start working on the lower part of the body, more specifically the legs and the talons. And these are some very fine, small details where I have to be a little bit more careful. And while I did those, I reserved some uh, white space or gr light grey space for some of the lighter details on those uh, tiny talons. I'm drawing this uh, branch that the bird is sitting on, trying to give it a little bit of texture. I started with a lighter brownish color, a raw umber, and then at the bottom I added some darker brown, like a uh, burnt umber, and uh, also at the very um, edge, the, the lower edge, which is facing away from the light source, I'm going to add a touch of black for the shadow on top on the part of the branch that is facing up towards the light source I'm adding some very light warm gray because that part of it is going to be the lightest because like I said it's uh, facing the light source and the part of the branch of the twig which is facing down or facing away from the light source is going to be in the shadow and I'm using those darker colors not just to shade that shadow area but also to um, create some light texture so that it looks a little bit more like the surface of a branch. Moving on to this part of the background here uh, on the left and at the bottom I have to cover that and this is another part of the drawing process that is maybe a little bit less interesting because it's just a large greenish area but it takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of blending. I'm doing a little bit more work on these talons, trying to make a transition between those feathers and uh, the legs which are showing through them. And like I said, I am reserving some of those spaces for the areas of lighter value. And here's the other one, the, the other leg. And I'm doing, doing this mostly with a black colored pencil for now because that's all I need. Just trying to get the shape of those fingers uh, to look right. I'm mostly going to stick with the reference photo. I'm just going to uh, change the appearance of the background a little bit and I'm going to simplify, it, uh, simplify some of the details on the body. Now the reason why I'm shading this lower part of the body and the belly area is a very light well, uh, value. It's almost white. 
but it's also facing down it's in the shadow so it's going to have to appear darker than completely white obviously and the part of the belly which is higher up which is more exposed to the light source it's going to be a little bit lighter but this lower part of those lighter feathers has to be darker and first I'm going to shade them with a black colored pencil very lightly and do a little bit of blending to establish those darkest shadow areas and then I'm going to add a touch of green here and there and the reason why I want to make this part of the um, of the feathers a little bit more greenish is because of the uh, the influence of the environment that reflected light which is uh, making the feathers um, catch a little bit of that greenish still doing a little bit more work on these uh, on these bluish feathers here the tip of the wings which are barely visible and of course that long tail uh, which is partly obscured by that branch that the bird is sitting on as for the smaller finer feathers lighter feathers I'm gonna put those in later at the end of the drawing process right now I'm just uh, doing the larger shading and the larger details the finer details will come later I'm just sh shading the branch here adding a little bit more shadow at the top at the bottom and more texture and then doing a little bit more of the background here until I can blend all of it in so it has to be layered patiently and I'm mostly using one darker green that I don't really know the name of because I didn't uh, remember it and uh, the lighter earth green and like I said if you want to make this a little bit smoother you can always add a touch of pastel pencils similar light green pastel pencil and that will make the blending process a lot easier now I'm pretty much going to finish the rest of the bird's body or the bird's tail because most of the body is finished and once I do that uh, the, this thing that is sticking out is probably the tip of one of the wings once I finish the tail uh, all I, have, I will have left to do is the background and then I will be able to apply the clear gesso and uh, to put those final details in. <clears throat> Some part of the tail is in the shadow and uh, that shadow is mostly coming from the bird's body and the other feathers and the branch and uh, just cleaning up some of the edges which was slightly softened during the blending process and now I'm drawing the light side of this branch and then working around it doing more of the background, that greenish background on both sides my camera isn't adjusted that well because uh, I did a little bit of work there at the bottom, I don't know if you saw it but I'm moving up now and I'm just going to finish this part of the background Uh, this was a commission drawing by the way and uh, I don't often get to draw birds but like I said they're very very interesting subjects to draw very col colorful and um, the next time I do this I think I'm going to use even more of a combination of pastel and color pencil because that just uh, makes things a little bit easier and also um, gives you some interesting effects uh, with smoother blending but you know all in due time now I'm going to apply the clear gesso I'm going to use uh, the uh, Liquitex clear gesso so once again for those who don't know this is uh, an acrylic primer for painting but you can also use it to create a sanded surface for pastels, colored pencil etc I like to use a tiny amount at a time and I, I like to use a soft synthetic brush and I just spread it around very evenly in a thin layer and believe me a thin layer is more than enough to give you a very nice tooth to work with and don't worry it won't smudge much even if it does smudge a tiny bit 
and you maybe soften some of the edges that's okay you can always bring them back because like I said the clear gesso will give you a lot of tooth to work with and you will be able to work from dark to light very easily just like you would on sanded paper but the trick I think is to apply a very small amount at the time to work from one segment to the next spreading the um, clear gesso very evenly and don't worry if it looks white and if the image looks blurry now when it dries it will dry completely clear that's why it's called clear gesso because it's transparent it's also somewhere called transparent gesso but transparent gesso or clear gesso I think you get the point once it's dry you can start refining both the background and some of the details on the main subject. On the background you can soften some of that texture because now you can layer and blend more easily even with your fingers if you want to. And on the main subject you can add some finer details, especially lighter details that you normally wouldn't be able to add on regular paper. As for the drying process, you can't work immediately after you've applied clear gesso. Uh, you have to wait for at least uh, 10 to 12 hours in my opinion. You can see how easily I'm now adding these uh, lighter details, these uh, fine lighter feathers using this light warm grey. What that's going to do, it's, it's going to make these feathers look way more three-dimensional. It's going to give way more depth to those layers of feathers and it's also going to make the bird look more three-dimensional because that range of value, that additional range of value that I'm able to create uh, makes everything look more three-dimensional by giving it more depth. And the thing is that I can not only put in areas of lighter value and make the make those lighter details stand out, I can also put in uh, areas of darker value and make them even darker because on this surface this rough textured surface those uh, pencils they become more vibrant and the dark ones become more darker and uh, that allows me to increase that contrast in value even further and I'm not just using that uh, on the bird itself but also on this branch by increasing the amount of contrast between the light side and the shadow side and maybe cleaning up the edges as well. I can also go back in with a lighter pencil and soften some parts of the background. This um, light grey, earth grey is kind of dull. It's making the background a little bit duller but you know that's fine. Uh, the fact that the background is duller is actu actually going to work to my advantage because it's going to make the bright colors of the bird stand out even more. And now I'm just adding some finishing touches to the bird itself, to its feathers. I'm going to add some details in lighter orange here and there to make those feathers look more three-dimensional as well. And then I'm going to add some lighter details with an ivory card pencil for those lightest parts of that orangey feathers at the top of the chest area because those are exposed to the light source so they are going to be a bit lighter and uh, maybe a little bit uh, more reflective and uh, just going back and forth adding some lighter and darker details and maybe a touch of red here and there just to make the color a bit more interesting I'm also um, cleaning up some of the edges on some smaller details like the eyes, the beak, these uh, talons and some other things. I put my signature in the lower left corner but you can't really see it very well because I didn't adjust the camera properly. Now I'm going to move it around a little bit so that you can see it. So that's it. That's the finished drawing. I hope you like it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a like and comment. And for longer videos, uh, full-length narrated videos and more content, you should check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching and bye for now.